I'm going to demonstrate using Git on shell.wiscos.online. This is a shared demonstration system which runs Wiscos Pyromaniac. It is accessible through a web browser. Wiscos Pyromaniac includes a Git client which works like a Wiscos version of Git would work. Demonstrating Git on this system shows how Git can be used on Wiscos. This is an internet accessible system, so if you want to play along, the only thing you need to do differently is change the directory that you work in. So first we open https://shell.wiscos.online and you should see there's a system here. It's booting up and it shows all the modules that are initialized and a few warnings before we get to the command prompt. So this is Riscos. You can do most of the things that you might expect, but it's a shared system. Anything you leave behind on here will be visible to others. So we'll create a directory with our name so that we're not going to get in anyone else's way. If you're following along, use your own name. So cdir jerf to create a new directory, and let's go into that directory. If we have a look, there's nothing in there. git clone hps colon slash slash github slash dot com slash fill pem line editor. Okay, I'm using the line editor repository because it's got some very simple code in there that we can build. So if we have a look, we can see that there's a line editor directory. And we can see that it's fetched some files. We can do ex to list the file types. And we can see that there are some typed files there, such as le source, which is the source code for line editor. We can have a look at these files if we want um, to see what um, what they contain. Um, let's have a see. Um, so type le source, and this will list the program. In here, we need to press Control C to stop the um, operation. That will be an escape. But in the editor, in the sorry, in the browser, this is Shift Control C. So I press Shift Control C and it stops. This is a basic text file. Um, it is better to keep your basic files in text form as they're handled better by Git and you can review them more easily. So let's try building the module. In this repository, you do this by running the release obey file. Cling cling release. And there we go, it has built it. We can see that there is a line editor module present. And if we look at the time, we can see that it was created just moments ago. We want to make some changes to the code. So let's edit the source code. Viscos Pyromaniac has a star edit command to launch an editor on a file. So we can just do star edit le source. And we can see the um, code there. This is the nano editor, and it lets us edit text files. The key shortcuts are listed at the bottom of the screen, and remember that any control codes that are handled by the browser will need a shift adding to them. We want control W for where is to search for the strings. I'm going to look for the help string so that I can change it. So where is help string? That's the definition there. Okay, so now we can go and change it. I'm going to add and me to the end of that. And then we can save the file with shift control X. There we go, saved. And we can build it again. Let's run the Plinkling release script. It's doing its stuff. And there we are. If we have a look at line editor now and what the current time is, we can see that it was the version that was just built. So we can load that module and see that it works. So we rm load line editor. And there's a few warnings, but they're not important. They're actually wrong, I believe. Um, the Pyromaniac code doesn't pass the dictionary 
values that are in line editor. So that needs to be fixed, but that's a fix for another day. But if we now do help line editor, we can see that it now has the help message that I just added. And we can see that it is basically working. We can use star recall to list the commands that it has remembered. And as you can see, there's only two commands because we've only just loaded the module. OK, let's see what Git makes of this. So we do git status, and this will tell us what has changed on this branch. Um, so we have modified one file. That's fair enough. You'll notice that it's showing us the file name with comma fd1 on the end of it. fd1 is the file type, um, and that's the file type for basic text. The Pyromaniac Git client displays all the file names in host format, so it means we get to see these um, file types on the end. I might change this in the future and make it just show Riscos names, um, but that's the way we're doing it right now. When we enter commands, we don't need to put the extensions on the end of it. We can just type them in Riscos format and it will understand. We can see what's changed in this file by doing git diff. And this shows us that there were two lines, uh, one line changed. The red shows the line that was replaced and the green shows what it was replaced with. The colouring is um, all done through um, ANSI codes on the host side and those get converted to VDU sequences so you can actually see the colours coming out in the terminal. It's just like you would expect on the original Git. So I want to create a branch to put this change on. The Viscos Git client will translate the branch names from your current alphabet to UTF-8, but whilst it can do that, it's not generally a good idea to use branches that aren't ASCII names, just for simplicity. So let's create a branch, check out minus B, add my name, so we'll check it out and switch to it. Before we commit anything though, we need to tell Git who we are. The Pyromaniac Git client has some defaults set, but we should set these properly so that we can see who we really are. If I do char show git star, we can see the two variables that it has set by default. I'm going to set these. Set git commit name. There we go. Right, having set our identity, let's commit our change. We can give just the riscos name of the file and it will be translated to native format. So we do git commit le source. So you should always explain the changes that you made so that it's clear in the it's clear to people in the future what we're doing and why. The first line is a summary of the change. So it should be one line that says what you are trying to do. So here we go, add my name, and my name is now in the help string. And shift control x to exit. And that change is now committed. We can see the changes present in the history by showing the most recent change with git show. There we go, we can see both the change name um, description and the diff of the um, files. Committing the change here only updates our local repository. To make it available to other people, it's necessary to push the change to a remote repository. However, the remote repository is owned by Phil Pemberton, and I don't have permission to push to it. So I need to tell Git to push to my fork of this repository, which I created earlier. To do that, I need to tell Git what my remote is. If you're following along here, you could fork the original repository and then use your new repository's name here. So, git remote add, I'm going to call it fork. I'm going to give it the name of my forked repository, github.com slash jerf slash line editor. And we can show that this has been added. This lists the two repositories that were present. 
Now we need to push the changes to my fork. So we do git push fork and then the branch name, which is add my name. Oops, I got that wrong. So I'm going to go back and edit that. Of course, this is using line editor to edit things. OK, enter my username and password. I'm entering jerf and password. So that's been rejected. And that's because GitHub doesn't allow you to push with a password anymore. Fortunately, if you follow that documentation, you'll be able to create a personal access token, which you can use to push the code. If you have such a token, you can use it in place of your password. I've created a special single purpose token for this repository because I'm going to paste it here for you to see. So, git push fork add my name. My username is Jeff, and my password. Click on paste, copy the password token from another window, and then paste that in. There we go. And there we go. The change has been pushed to my remote fork. I can create a pull request by going to the URL that was suggested there. The credentials that I've just entered won't be stored on this system. So if you need to authenticate, you'll need to enter these details every time. That's because this is a shared system and we don't want to be sharing our credentials with other people. So there you go, that's the basics. There's more information on what's supported in Star Help Git, like this. It shows you all the commands that are supported. And you can get more information on Pyromaniac itself with Star Help Pyromaniac features. There's a lot of extra help that is available there. Thank you for watching and if you are following along.